right, I'm not left, I'm not Republican, I'm not Democrat, I'm not Libertarian, I'm a human f***ing being. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is Matt with the Clip Farm. And today I want to talk about, um, well, Trump's first criminal uh, case that he's facing. Uh, he's, he's got 91 charges against him, four of those being felonies, and this is the first felony charge that they're going after him for uh, in New York, I believe. I said, I was tripping through the internet and saw um, an MSNBC story that, uh, well, you, <laughs> you're not going to believe who they, who they called up for this. So uh, let me, let me just play a little bit of this and give you what I'm, an idea of what I'm talking about here. Um, how do you assess the strength of the prosecution's case? Michael Avenatti. Well, I think what I'm about to say is going to surprise a lot of people, and that is that, um, you know, I think this is the wrong case at the wrong time, Ari. Um, I, I think that the case is in many ways stale at this juncture. You're talking about conduct that occurred some eight years ago. Uh, I think the uh, fact that it's occurring in state court in New York uh, is a mistake. Uh, and I think that when you are going to uh, potentially deprive tens of millions of Americans uh, of their choice for the presidency of the United States, whether we agree with those folks or not, or regardless of what we may think of Donald Trump, I think it's a mistake to do it based on a case of this nature. Hmm. Um, I, I was hoping, frankly, that uh, there would have been less hand-wringing, uh, less bedwetting, and that the January 6th case would have been filed in a more timely manner. There's no excuse or reason as to why that case could not have been brought in 2021, and it should have been brought in 2021. And had it been brought in 2021, we would not find ourselves in the situation that we're in right now. Now, I know a lot of people have been critical of the United States Supreme Court, and uh, as well as the second, uh, not the second, but the D.C. Circuit. Yep. You know, I, I think those complaints are frankly misplaced. And Michael, have you been in touch with D.A. Bragg's I think that's a good spot to pause that because they just start getting into what they think of how the case is going to go and yeah, you know, what their idea of what's going to happen. So it just struck me as odd that they would even call Avenatti. I mean, yes, he did start some of the proceedings on this and one thing and another. However, he's the man is in prison for 19 years for the fraud and extortion that he tried to pull on several companies, and I believe on Stormy Daniels. Uh, what what his opinion has to do with this case, I don't know. But the mainstream media sure wants to put him up on the screen to um, parade him around in hopes that he would uh, talk some trash, apparently. I say, and uh, if you were watching closely old Ari Fleischer's face there, Ari wasn't liking what Avenatti was saying. Um, <laughs> I did, as it just kind of made me laugh, but it, uh, uh, honestly, I don't know what to say about this. It's, it's another example of the mainstream media trotting out different narratives, different people, smoke and mirrors, deceptions, et cetera, et cetera when it has nothing to do with the actual case itself. Um, that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, for everybody interested, uh, Trump is having a rally this Saturday on the 13th in Pennsylvania, starting at, I think, 7 p.m. Eastern time, if you care to watch that. Um, have a good day, everybody. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Have a wonderful night.